But we heard um, Josh Frydenberg yesterday yes. talking in, in Parliament about backing Victorians, hope, plan for the future. Like, we need to hear that stuff. Yeah, but yeah. that's from the Treasurer, no I, less. I, I think um, your criticism and the discussion about leaders not wanting to be wrong and that actually holding them back. Absolutely. Why don't we use that as a segue to talk oh, about... Gentle segue. The gentle segue. Let's talk about what we can control as business owners. Well, we know and what we can't control is everything we just talked about. So let's just sweep that over to one side. <laughs> that we, we briefly mentioned last week about creating an interim yes. strategy. Now, let's say that your business has a good strategy or it doesn't have a good strategy. It's largely irrelevant to what we're talking about today. Yep. We're talking about an interim strategy um, and what we're really talking about is we can't do anything about these these big macro things. So let's start working out our one and two and yep. four and six week interim strategy plans. Yes. Um, there's a very good chance that some of your earpieces go and walk about again. There's a very good chance that some of your staff working from home or stood down or whatever it might be are not in a very good headspace yep. right now and are feeling a bit lost as, as many would be. Um, there's an opportunity to say, right, let's get a blank sheet of paper. Yes. Let's work out what our priorities are for the next one, two, four, six weeks. Yes. And then a bigger one here now to Christmas. Right? Like the mouse with the big piece of cheese, just now, small bites. You use the mouse with the cheese with me a lot because you know that I try to eat the whole cheese and you say, just nibble, just nibble. So yes, the mouse with the cheese, we'll call yeah, it Yeah, because we, we, we can't, I don't think we can make decisions about six months and 12 months no, we time. Can't. We just look at what's in front of you. But you can't just leave your staff for the next four weeks and just hope no, that they're going to be... make an assessment you know, and have short-term... Switch back on. Short-term right? strategies. That's exactly right. So the four pillars of all founders. Yes. The four pillars of all founders. Lead unashamedly your way. What does that mean? It means that it's not just a one-way street that this is who I am and I'm going to lead that way. It means that you are a leader. You're in a leadership position for a reason. Yes. For you to try and, let's say, take a manual and a cookie-cutter leadership style does not use your best skills as a leader and you need to go and get what your best skills are yes. and apply them to your leadership yep. style. So, but that requires some uh, accountability and some other things. We've got a whole program on this. So anyone can just send an email <laughs> through and check it out anytime. But that's really important now, now more than ever. Your to, style now is important. Yes. And, and, and I think making sure that your teams know that you are authentic, that you're being honest. That well, if Laura Racky walked into her team today and you weren't being yourself and you were sort of reading out of a manual no this is what you do in a crisis your team is instantly like what's going on yeah they know yeah. right they instantly know so i think you have to be very authentic and like i said a bit last week vulnerable the next one is keeping your promises now mm. um i understand that right now it's very hard to make promises because yes. so i would be saying rather than sort of keeping your promises i wouldn't be making too many promises and i'd be very clear about that i cannot make pro too make many some, promises make some achievable pro I, I actually we talked about this and i didn't get to mention it last week yes. which was the great story of when i was a, a law graduate during the gfc yes um the firm i was at you know it, all around the, the country, lawyers were getting sacked left, right, and centre. Not just lawyers, obviously, admin support and, and everything. That's your industry at the time, right? So you had an eye on it. Yeah. Um, and that was making people really nervous. And what this firm did, they actually said, We will not let anybody go through this. However, however, what they did say was, There's going to have to be sacrifices across the board for all of you. And it was a really good way to get everybody on board with those sacrifices. Well, the relief because, is immediately That's there. right, yep. because we had this promise and it was so tangible and it was so clear. And it meant, you know, no more taking clients out for lunches, you know, n no more taxis home. Like, you know, all the bullshit things that... Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> How many episodes in? Not enough. Anyway... All of the things that were, were nice to have, but not really that important about running a law firm, running a business, um, they all went. And there was not one complaint about that because we all promise. had, they kept their promise. And it meant that not only was everybody on board to make those sacrifices for themselves, because let's face it, we're all selfish human beings. I don't care how much people try and Our say that. Outrageous accusation, yes. They're altruistic, it's just not true. But then also there was that care and concern for the person next door and the one at the desk over there that we, we actually did want to support well, each other. We're in it together then all of a sudden. We're in it together. Yeah, they're, not, they're not against each other trying right. to keep each other's roles. Tighten the belt, let, let's stick this out. And they stuck to that promise. 
you know, pay freezes the works. Everyone just accepted it um, and it created this brilliant loyalty yep. in the business. So that to me, when you talk about promises, that always just comes up to me that the business made that promise and it bent every sale to keep it. And it meant so much to the people in that business. Now, if they make that same promise and then the next week cut 20% of the staff, right? Good luck to you. Your company is over. Your company, well, the other 80% are just going to be waiting for... That's well, right. They're all waiting going to be looking, the well, they'll right. be looking for another job. They exactly will. In advance. Where else would they go? Mm. Um, the next one is building uh, unshakable employee engagement. And that sort of comes back to yeah. that same example that you use. By keeping your promises, you can't... That's a big piece in building unshakable employee engagement. Now, you at that time were incredibly engaged in an industry that was falling to pieces. And yep. uh, there is a very good opportunity within your business right now under the All, Fillers, four, all, all Founders Four Pillars uh, to do these things and to really implement them. The last one is win clients for life. Now, that right now, I think, has a lot of currency yes. in it. I think if you, be it your customer engagement or your clients, depending upon what type of industry you're in, you got an opportunity now to win them for life. Yes. And that is to be uh, communicative in a way that is not stupid, yes. that is within your own style, um, and to build, I guess, that sort of brand position now. And some of the greatest brand positions are yes. built in uh, difficult markets. Absolutely. Oh, no, this I, is it. I, so that's why I get excited about the opportunity about that sort of thing, I, but those four pillars. I worked with a partner mm. in, and he said this, made this statement to a client in a meeting once that resonated. Mm. And, he act, and again, you know, through a crisis, the client's crisis. Yes. And he actually said, we are sailing into the bay with you. And I like it. it's a good one. Is it, uh, is it copyright? <laughs> and it's not just hyper, it, it can't just be hyperbole, but the reality is that if you work with your clients to get them through the other side. Yep. Oh, they'll be with you for life. They will be. No, of course they will. Of course they will. And and that's what it comes down to. So rather okay. than thinking oh, sorry, go on. of a transaction, you say, I'm, I'm, try, I'm winning this client for life. I want to work with this client in 10 years. So how do we get rid of the ego of of having a strategy that might need changing that yep. might be wrong yep. that is going to pick up all of those things and get us through until we're ready to form a new long-term strategy well like i said last week you have to decide where you're going to go you have to make a decision so you can't just wait and hope that you can run out the clock yep. over the next little while um your people are going to be very very nervous right now and tiptoeing around not sure about their own yep. future let alone uh, they've got their own personal challenges in their lives as well um the main value of it is that it settles the horses. The first things first is to yep. settle the horses, right? And then the second thing saying it is to start giving people something to go at. Yes. Right? To give them something to chase. Now, if you're in a situation right now where every day all you're hearing is uncertainty and you have something certain, you have something that can be measured, you have yes. something in your work that you can go and pursue, that is going to be a very, very valuable piece for your staff. So that sounds like team. an interim strategy has to be very short term, easily definable yes. strategy with the pillars of the actual plan underneath. Yeah, and I don't mean slogans. I mean that this is what we're going to do. This is our, our strategy for the next six weeks. This is why. Yes. We don't know what the government's going yes. to do. So this is what we're doing, yes. right? We're going to have a two week review and we're going to change it if we have to. Yes. This is where we're going, team. Let's go. So for example, we'll back you. our strategy is going to be to build to win clients for life, for example, in the next six weeks. And then the pillars under that is um, constant constant request for feedback for clients. Yep. Meet with clients, ask them what they need right now. Yep. Make sure you're meeting every deadline. Whatever it is, yep. then your what team know, your... here's my KPIs and the, the end goal is to win these clients for life. That's it. And we've got six weeks to do it. That is exactly right. That now. is incredibly motivating well, and it empowering. Is, it, it, well, what it is, is it gives them a focus and it yes. gives them something to get excited and target. Because Without right worrying now, about what happens after let's that. Let's shut out weeks. everything else right now. What we need to do is the next six weeks, yep. this is what we're doing. So this is like an, what we call an interim strategy. Now your biggest strategy, you, you don't necessarily have to throw it out, but I would put it in hibernation with, yep. the, with, the, with everything around yep. you. Um, put some blinkers on. And just say, right, we're, we're going six weeks and we're going to review. And then it has to be built around customer and clients at its core in yep. the end. Like any of these strategies has to, the, the, the customer or client voice has to be involved yes. and as the key metric, as the key, because what else matters? I mean, we talked to Chris Critias a few weeks ago. They deliver software, working software yes. every two weeks. It's their only metric. He said they track some other things, but yep. bang. So let's do that. Let's, let's take that agile strategy and go, 
for the next two weeks, this is all we're going to focus on. And we're going on. to ask the client at the end of the two weeks, what do you think? How what are we going? This? Is this the way we can continue to go? That's what exactly else do you right. Need? Um, so I we're think in it, this together. We're in this together. You and me, client supplier. Yes. And let's get our both our businesses over this hump. That's it. Yeah. Because we can't rely on the the, the, the boat to come and save us. We're going to have to go and get it. Yeah. So that's sort of the value of it. Um, and it, and it can be bold. The final thing I was saying is, is it can be bold. Um, and I would be unafraid because. What's the worst that happens? It doesn't matter. You're giving people something to chase. And you can say at the end of the four weeks, you know what, that wasn't the right approach. But we tried, we did it, let's change it. And this is what we need to see from Andrew. So that's all we've got left for today. Super producer Rick yelling in my ear, never yells actually, but thank you, Laura Racky. We had a Racky ranch in there. I don't know if we solved anything today. Um, Good luck everyone for the next little while. Interim strategy, get it done. And we look forward to seeing you all next week.